What is up there everybody, Citrus Aviation here with another video and today we are going to do one of my most requested videos in quite a long time and that is a how to take your own model aircraft photos video. And this one will tell you everything that you need to take your awesome model aircraft out in the wild and take amazing pictures with them. And we're going to get started here with what gear that you need because obviously you need some stuff to photograph. First off, you need a model airplane to photograph with. That's obviously the most important thing because that will be the subject of your photo. The second thing that you will need is a device to take your pictures with. You can use your phone for this. Um, some phones will actually allow you to shoot raw images now, which is really cool. So that is particularly ideal because with this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit your photos in Lightroom. And if you have a raw image, that is much more editable than a JPEG. Um, but even just a standard phone, you can still take great pictures of your phone. And a lot of phones have these really nice apps that you can use to edit with. So there are a lot of options. You don't have to use Lightroom. But I'll just be showing you how to do with Lightroom. I personally will be using a DSLR. This is a Nikon D3200 with a Tamron 18 to 400 millimeter kit lens. This full setup is about $1,000 or less. I mean, I personally was able to get this set up for about 750 bucks. If you include tax, about $800. So not a bad setup for a professional photographer. So you could do better. You get frameless cameras, really high-end uh, lenses and whatnot. But this will be perfectly fine. Another very important thing when you take your pictures is to ensure that your equipment is ready to go. If you're using a phone, make sure you have enough storage to take the pictures and that you have a fully charged battery. Same thing if you're using a DSLR, make sure your battery pack is fully charged and make sure that you have plenty of space on your memory card and that the memory card is in fact in the camera. I have gone to photo shoots where I forgot the memory card. You don't want that to happen. So for those who are interested, I used a subtle speed of 1 to 640 today. I used an f-stop of f9 and then I used an ISO of 100. I do like using ISO 100 when I can, particularly on bright sunny days like today. But ISO 200 will often work if it's partly cloudy. But, you know, use the settings that are appropriate for the time that you are shooting. The next thing that you're going to want is a prop to put with your model airplane, maybe a stand. A stand is great if you have a model stand and that way you can put the model in more positions than just having it on the ground. Um, another thing is you may want to use some natural elements for your props. Like I often will use natural elements like snow, maybe some bricks, some of the natural surroundings. And you'll get to see that here in today's tutorial. So now that we have everything that we want, it is time to get the models ready to go. Today I am going to take three models with me. The TIE 777-300ER by Phoenix the Frontier A321 by Jeremy Jets, and the United 737-800 by NG Models. The first thing that I do before I take these models is I check to see if the model will fit on a stand. That is really important. I did have to take a wood stand for the TIE 333 because my standard Gemini Jets metal stand did not fit in the hole. So I just took the wood stand as well. That's really important. You need to bring the right stand for the right model. And then... I just put the model in the box because I am going to transport this in a pack with my camera gear as well. So it's really important they give the models proper protection while transporting them. So now that we have our bag packed and ready to go, let's go and do some photography. For today's photo shoot, I went to drive over to Sellerville Lake over here in the Des Moines area and I parked at Red Feather Prairie. Now on the way to the lake, I found this really cool location with some of these flowers that are growing up by the sidewalk. So I decided to take a couple of pictures and I thought the result was pretty good. So we have finally landed at our location, which is this awesome beachfront here by Sellerville Lake. And you can see there's some really cool scenery here that you can do for photography. I'm definitely going to come back here and do some more suits later. But we are just here for this awesome beachfront suit today. So let's go down to the beach to get some pictures. Something that I want to note is you don't have to go to these exotic locations to take your photos. 
you can just go to your backyard or front yard and you can find lots of interesting things that make for great photos. I'm just showing you an example of something that I found to walk really well. I have taken a lot of photos in my driveway even that walked well. And so you just need to find a location that walks well. I also went in the morning for the shoot because I wanted to get good lighting. This was taken at about 10.30 to 11 a.m. in the morning when the lighting was on the correct side of the lake for me to get these photos. Uh, keep in mind, wherever you suit, you want to consider lighting because this is really important. You want the sun to be behind you when you take the photo because you want the plane to be fully lit and you want the sun behind you so it'll sign on the plane when you take the picture. So we have now arrived at the beach and here is this really cool spot on a rock where I decided to take a couple pictures with the Frontier A321. So we are now beachfront and I found a neat spot with some of this exposed wood and there was a rock over about 100 feet away from it and so I decided to just grab the rock, drag it on over and make that as a nice surface to put the models on to take the pictures. So here you can see I have some pictures of the Thai 777-300ER and the United 737-800. Uh, something about the NG 737 mold is that it has no stand hole, which is a big disappointment because that limits the possibilities. But I was able to take these pictures, which I thought turned out pretty well. My favorite pictures from the day are of the Phoenix Thai 777 with the wood stand. I thought that looked super awesome with this background here, this rock and this wood and the beach and the water. I just thought it looked awesome. I was really happy with how it turned out. And then towards the end of my suit, I decided to put the stand and the model on the beach, which I thought turned out really well. Here you can see the Thai 777-300 on the beach. And then here is the Frontier A321 on the beach. And I'm pretty happy with how these pics turned out. So once you're taking your pictures with whatever equipment that you're using, whether it's a phone or whether it is a DSLR, we're going to go home and we're going to edit the pictures. So we are now in a Lightroom and I'm going to show you how I edited these pictures. All right, so let's go and find a picture to edit. Uh, I'm just scrolling through this timeline here of these raw files and I'm kind of going to decide to pick this United 737-800. Let's find a nice one to go with. Eh, that's all right. Let's do this series here where we have the United 737-800 on a rock. Now we're going to inspect these pictures to ensure that we have the focus that we want. I'm going to take a scan in the image to ensure that the plane is in focus how I want it. And then I check multiple images or check this series and I find the ones I like the most. If I find one that I like, I will be putting a tick mark by the image there. I'm going to click the tick mark in the top left of the box that will highlight those pictures. And then I go through and check the rest to see if there are any that I want to take a look at and edit further. I do not find any other pictures, so we are going to go back to the two I did earlier. Now here we're going to take a look at these images even closer to ensure that we find one that we want to edit. So I'm comparing the two, seeing which one I like. I zoom in really far and I decide to focus on the U to see how the focus is and the clarity and all that sort of things. Just the best of the two. So I look at the U's and I'm like, eh, the first one's good, but the second one's a bit better. So I decide to go with this second one and this is what we are going to edit today. So now that we have our image selected and assuming that we are in the develop mode, we scroll down to the bottom where it says lens correction and we're going to tick both of those boxes there and this will fix any issues that are occurring with our lens. A lot of lenses will have little issues such as mine has a bit of a haze effect around objects that you photograph. So selecting these two boxes will fix that issue. Next, we are going to sharpen the image to make the image nice and sharp and not have any haziness. Now, I use a sharpen between 70 and 80, which is going to do 77 for the purpose of this video. You really don't want to go above 80 or 90 because otherwise things get too sharp and you introduce a lot of grain into your picture. We are going to increase the luminance just a little bit and increase the detail there. That's to get rid of the noise while still preserving a good level of detail in the image. Once we have finished that, let's scroll up to the top and let's level this image. We want to ensure that the fuselage of the airplane is perfectly centered with the image. And we would like to leave as little space left out of both sides as possible. I am going with the standard 4x3 image here. And we're just going to size it right to about perfect. 
and that looks good right there. Once we have taken care of that, we're just going to check our results right now just to ensure that we're just looking good so far. Looks like we are good for now. We are next going to move the dehaze up to 100 and uh, what we're doing here is we're just looking for dust spots. Now of course dust spots will naturally come on your camera, particularly if you have a DSLR, it just is the way that is. You can clean your lens a hundred times a day and you will still get dust spots on your image. It just is the way that is, but you do want to ensure that your camera lens is cleaned before you take these pictures. Uh, because this image doesn't really have any sky in the background, even if there were any dust spots, you can't really see them. So we're just going to set the dehaze back to zero. Uh, setting dehaze to 100 makes it really easy to spot if there are any dust spots. So finding no dust spots, we're going to move on to the next phase of editing this picture. We are next turning up the clarity of the image a little bit. This helps to make all the details just that little bit more clear and sharp. We are now going to turn up the exposure slightly. Now what we really want to do is on the histogram we want to have a nice curve. What we are looking for is we want to have an approximately upside down U shape with the top of the U being right there arched right at the middle of the image. So we want that histogram to look about how it is right now. With this image it was already exposed pretty well when we took the photo. That is why it is really important to get the settings on your camera correct when you start the photo shoot. A lot of phones will do this automatically, but I always shoot on manual with my DSLR and this allows for more control. And so because I did suit this about correctly when I took the picture, I didn't have to do much exposure adjustments here. We are next going to turn up the contrast and the shadows a little bit. What this does is this allows for additional depth and contrast to the image, which makes the image a little bit more pleasing and more real life. And then increasing the shadow slider means that you can actually see inside the shadows a little bit more. So now we have this effect where we have deeper shadows, which are more defined, but we can also see the objects underneath and in the shadows a lot more. We are next going to move up the vibrance and saturation sliders a little bit in order to make this image really pop so that whenever I post it online, it'll look really, really good. Now, if you're looking for a more natural look, you don't want to turn up these sliders as much as I do, but this is the world of Instagram and people like bright images. So I am going to turn up those sliders for the purpose of this picture as the ultimate destination for this image is going to be Instagram and being shared with friends on Discord and iMessage and whatnot. So after we have completed all that, we want to check to ensure that we have gotten all of our settings correct and that we didn't miss anything. So now that we have that all done, let's export this image. Now I tend to like to set my images to be exported on the date that I took them. And in our instance, I took these photographs on the 1st of September, 2021. And so I have these being exported to my desktop with a folder created for the 9th of September 2021. You can see I have 2021-09-01. After that, we want to select some other settings. Uh, the image format will be JPEG and this will be an RGB image because this is not an image for print. This is an image to be used online. So RGB is what we are going to go with here. And then this is really important. Set your quality slider all the way up to 100. Therefore, you get the maximum quality possible. If you do need to reduce the quality for Instagram or whatnot, you can do that in Photoshop later on. But we do want to export it in the maximum quality so that we can adjust the quality later. It is really bad if you have low quality images that you need to upscale later because that doesn't work very well. With all those settings set how we want it, we want to click the export button and export this image. And that really is all that there is to it. You have now taken an incredible image and you have added it to look incredible so that all your friends can now wonder how did you take those incredible images. So it was my pleasure to show you all how you can take these awesome photographs for yourself and take great pictures of your model airplanes. If you have any further questions, do put them down in the comments below. And you can go check out my photography on my Instagram page, Citrus Aviation. And I also will put these photos sprinkled throughout my videos as well. So I hope this video is really helpful to you all. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.